please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. 28 higher now, 26 higher on the Nifty, 35 lower on the Bank Nifty, 50 lower on the Bank Nifty now. Now it's beginning to settle here. So 24 points higher, 26 points higher, 10,600, 10,608 thereabout is the first equilibrium on the Nifty. And on the bank nifty, somewhere around 25,600, down about 75 points is what we have. Okay, now we're beginning to slip a bit more, 10,605. But 10,600 is the bit of a, a you know, a morning equilibrium. Uh, softness is on account of the bank nifty, of course. Uh, Axis and ICICI are down 1%. That's, of course, from the index. SBI is down about half a percent. Kotak down about half a percent. We just want to see PNB's reaction once and then uh, move on to the rest of the index stocks as well. Uh, uh, 7.5% lower now on PNB. Yeah, 7.5% lower. So 103 is what we have on PNB, almost uh, getting to that 100 mark. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, Ambuja Cement, of course, is down about 2.5%. ACC no longer is part of the index. So uh, that's, of course, uh, not there. But uh, if you look at uh, the gainers, Yes Bank is up 2%, which is quite interesting. HCL Tech is up 1%. And Maruti and Tata Motors, so that auto rally is intact. Uh, Hero Motor Corp as well, up a bit. And now as we speak, uh, the Nifty is settling about 25 points higher and the bank Nifty about 65 points higher is what we have, Sonia, right now. Oh yes, sir. In fact, you know, even for the mid-cap index, Anuj, it's a flat opening, absolutely. The market breadth is just about hanging in favour of the advances. 940 stocks on the advancing side and your entire gamut of PSU banks are under pressure. PNB, of course, leading it from the front with an 8% cut. But apart from that, Allahabad Bank, OBC, Bank of India, Union, uh, you hit a dart in the dark and you'll get it right on the short side in the banking space. Uh, SBI is also being dragged down, actually, from the frontliners. Uh, you also pointed that out. Apart from that, you have some stocks that are in the news. Jain Irrigation is on the upside post that uh, deal that they did. Uh, Ashok Leyland, there's been JP Morgan upgrade this morning. Ashok Leyland, in any case, has been making new highs day after day, so up 1% there. MRPL, Aramco may be interested in some of these companies, so MRPL and uh, you know, Chennai Petro are two stocks that are up about 1.5%. Uh, Graphite India is the other one, 4% higher over there. Uh, HEG2 uh, up in the green. And you have names like Madison Sumi. That one has made a big comeback after the clarifications from the management. So Madison Sumi up about 1.5%. But for now, the Sensex is up just about 100 odd points, hanging on to the green line. It's the bank nifty that's dragging its feet a bit. Uh, so, will be any more stocks that you've looked at? Uh, so, Sonia, Obroy Realty is cooling off a little bit. It had a great run yesterday. Today, the stock's down about 2 2.5%. Uh, obviously, the graphite plays are running because of Jeffrey's note and they have some very, very smart upside targets on the stock. So, both of them are up. And I'll simply point out, uh, the IBC plays, again, excited today. Monet, um, Amtech, these are some of the stocks on the upside. So, Anuj, uh, looking at things as they stand, I mean, <laughs> after a 400-point rally overnight on the Dow, I guess you could argue that a lot of that was already priced in. How yes. do you rate this opening? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you'd want to say that. But, you know, what really stands out is autos uh, because... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, not just uh, names like Maruti, the kind of buying that you've seen. I think the stock of the last two weeks really has been Mothers and Sumi because, uh, you know, this is a classical case. I mean, a bit of a case study of, uh, you know, how stocks, when they correct and maybe sometimes overreact to news uh, from lows, the buying is equally sharp. Uh, it had gone to... 306, yeah. 7, I think. And then I think stocks like these, you know, you rarely get buying opportunities because these are stocks that move in a linear fashion. So yeah. when there is a fall like this, I guess it's generally it, lapped up. Exactly. And that's what's happening with Mothers and Sumi. So that stock, by the way, is making highs of the morning right now. But uh, Ashwini, your thoughts on the market opening? The Bank Nifty Open 65 lower is already now recovering and the Nifty is already making highs of the morning now. Uh, uh, have you bought the first uh, uh, sort of trade? The other day, you know, some people had great issue with my saying that uh, PSU banks will become double digit. PNB is almost there. Uh, I think what I am looking for was that from 640, there should be a collapse. And I would believe that the resistance has held. The way, you know, it's a mild correction. So we are long on bank nifty. I think post this first half an hour, one hour, uh, buying will return. Today, what's interesting and what we forgot to mention was that yesterday IT was down. Today, IT is recovering. So if we have this balancing act of IT and banks, I don't think Nifty will fall a whole lot. And once this sort of you know initial selling gets absorbed, mm -hmm. uh, then the shorts, which are sitting at uh, 10,650, uh, they start to smell trouble. Mm -hmm. So today is a day consolidation use these declines to buy. But uh, overall, the idea should remain to buy into the market and uh, broadly your stop should be 
10,580, 590. Okay, so you're saying you're buying Bank Nifty right now. You're given the Nifty stock for Bank Nifty trade. What would be the stock? See, Bank Nifty. Uh, you know, yesterday's uh, uh, close or today's low uh, that is about 25, uh, 660. Thereabouts is a fairly decent uh, stop. But I don't think you'll need it because today the market should have gapped down or you know had a big uh, red bar on the downside. In fact. As we speak, there's a lot of buying coming back into even State Bank, Reliance, HDFC Bank. You know, if such large stocks are moving, I don't think any sort of dip is going to be sustainable. Yeah, yeah absolutely. In fact, um, you know, some of those names plus Yes Bank really takes the top honors there. So, Ashwini, what is the big call then right now? See, clearly, uh, you know, private banks are giving you that dip. So, uh, Yes Bank, Madhusan Sumi, I've been saying for last mm. couple of days, uh, you know, IGL. So across the board, I think Reliance could participate today, and uh, IT is doing well. So maybe look at uh, declines in TCS, uh, the declines that it had yesterday. Uh, I think IT could also participate on the upside today, particularly if we get close to crossing that 10,640-650 zone. Okay, so Darshan, now your shorts on some of these uh, PSU banks is working out, but at what point would you take your profits, or would you let them run through the course of the day? No. <laughs> Sorry, you have to let them run through the course of the day. My view was really a positional call on the short side, mm -hmm. and uh, that should run for the course of the full settlement. There will be significantly lower levels. There are two buy ideas as we as the market opens up. One is Ashok Leyland. We have all spoken about it, and the other is Indigo. Indigo is also ripe for a significant momentum upswing. I am avoiding any trade in the indices. Okay, the market is now, by the way, making highs of the morning already, and clearly it looks like that initial selling. Was absorbed and the market has moved on. Mitesh, anything on your data? Yeah, a couple of names. I know. I think uh, you know we've seen a good rally in Canfin Home Finance. I think LSE Home uh, Housing Finance is just uh, breaking out on the intraday chart, so that could be a buy with a stop at five and six. Look for a five forty, five forty-five kind of a target. Okay, uh, Ashwini, one final word. Then you've been talking about Madhus and Sumi. What would be the targets here? See, I would think it will uh, go back and uh, retest the highs. Because if global markets are recovering and it's a global play, etc., uh, I think this is the best global stock we have, uh, along with the metals. All right, gentlemen, thanks a lot for taking us through market opening. Uh, we'll keep coming back to you, Prakash. Thanks to you as well for yes. dropping into our studios. Uh, let's invite our market master, then Andrew Holland, chief executive uh, officer at uh, Avendus Capital Alternate Strategies, is with us. Uh, Andrew, good morning. So the the million dollar question uh, morning. is the bull market correction over? Are we headed back towards the highs? What would be your base case scenario now? So I think um, I, I think there's a few things there, Anuj. Before uh, I answer that question, one is that um, you know what we've seen in the past uh, week or so is a lot of the Fed members. Um, just coming out and trying to soothe the nerves of the market, saying, you know, great growth, um, you know, but uh, we're not going to be too aggressive. Um, so, you know, Jerome uh, Powell, who's the new Fed chairman, I'm sure when he, he delivers today, um, will we'll really kind of reiterate that and, and try and uh, make sure that the market's feeling okay. Now, the risk to that, obviously, if, if you know, growth does accelerate a lot quicker, then the market will price that in. Um, and when we get more volatility, but I think in the, in the very short term, um, you know, we're back to where we are. All of you know the VIX in the indices globally are, uh, are below 20. Um, you know, bond yields have stabilised, so you know we're back to where we were. Um, but you know, the, the good news, I suppose, is that that complacency about everything is is less than it was, uh, and and markets will um, now follow what we see from the data. Coming from the U.S. because you know you can't have a Fed too far behind the curve. That's for sure. Um, so I think the markets, you know, if if they can breach that kind of 10,650, um, you know, probably have a you know more momentum. Um, but you know what the risk is, as as we've seen, is if global markets, uh, you know, kind of uh, head downwards again because of fears of, of of rising inflation. So I don't think we're out of the woods, but we're in a better place than we were maybe two three weeks ago.
Okay. Uh, in fact, that was my next question. Andrew, good morning. About two, three weeks ago, the advice that came in from most market experts and watchers was it's better to sit on cash for now and, uh, you know, let this volatility play out before taking a big call on the index or on investments. Um, has that call changed now or do you think some amount of money should be put to work? Yeah, I mean, some of the, obviously, the, the, the stocks which have been beaten down, some of, the, say, the private banks, um, you know, for, for no particular reason apart from you can get liquidity from those stocks, um, you know, obviously are the, are the, are the ones to be, uh, to, to be nibbling back at now. So it gave you the chance to kind of realign your portfolio from, from maybe uh, less quality to quality again. Um, I, I'm, you know, after the the uh, problems with PSU banks and PNB, I think that's just highlighted why you need to be in private banks only. Um, so, you know, perhaps those kind of things just help you kind of uh, reassess that the quality is where you should be, rather than the whole market's going to keep rising and and mid and small caps will will make you um, double your money overnight type of uh, thing. <laughs> Andrew, morning. So let me extend that question. Uh, clearly, I mean, you're advising staying away from PSU banks for obvious reasons. Uh, buy into private sector banks. What about NBFCs? Because simultaneously, there's been this whole talk about the way bond yields have moved and whether you know cost of money is just going to start to pinch. Yeah, I think it's a sector which you know you've got to be a little bit more careful about um, because I think bond yields will continue to to, to rise a bit more in India yet. Um, I think the rupee will probably become under a lot of pressure uh, over the next few months as well. So, um, you know, perhaps a, the, the, the switch was really from MBSCs, which had a great run, uh, more towards the IT sector, uh, which anyway, you know, we, we kind of become more neutral on in our thinking in terms of the fundamentals. And, and you know, you're starting to see at least some kind of, uh, you know, growth starting to come back for the sector. Uh, it's still nowhere near where it used to be. Um, so I'm not excited in that respect, but from a, um, you know, a stabilizing plus the rupee depreciation, which I'm expecting, um, then, um, you know, you, you could see a, a lot more favor towards this sector in the, in the very short term. So that's the kind of thing that switch that we did um, some months back, actually. Okay, that's uh, interesting. So, uh, Andrew, uh, are, are there any shorts as well in your fund right now? Uh, are you hedging uh, by any, anything or... Uh, uh, is it only longs for now? No, we've uh, we've reduced the uh, the short exposure, Anuj, obviously from where we were, um, and uh, you know there's, there's certain sectors and, and and stocks which you know remain out of favour uh, in our minds, and uh, whilst we're, we're not uh, um, you know so so overly negative at of PSU banks uh, at the moment because of the of the recent falls. Um, you know, any rise kind of gives us the opportunity to to add those if we need to. Um, so, you know, I think the strong sectors, I think, for, for, for the next few weeks will probably be autos where uh, the growth looks to be uh, continuing to be very, very strong. And that will probably be reflected in the part makers as well, auto part makers. Um, we're liking the private banks. Uh, and as I said, we, we're more constructive on, uh, on, on IT. And uh, on the negative side, you know, a little bit of the hedge is obviously going to come through um, uh, index as the, the VIX falls. Uh, we'll probably be where we've been looking at the moment. But nothing, you know, I'm not, uh, I've never been overly negative. I just think we got too complacent about bond yields and how that could in impact uh, global markets. So, you know, there's lots of reports out there saying if bond yields go to 4%, the markets will correct by 25%. I, I, I agree with that. Um, so that's the risk that we, we're all going to have to think about. Uh, as the global economy starts to uh, accelerate in growth. And I don't think the market's really s still taking that into account yet, despite the, the kind of uh, recent fall. So I think we're, we're back to where we were in, in terms of a uh, little bit uh, less expensive markets, but I don't think the, um, I don't think valuations are really supporting you know, massive up moods from here.
Thankfully, we got spared the blushes on the downside as well, right? I mean, it was barely, what, a 10% correction that we saw and we started the recovery process. But nevertheless, talking about stocks, you did mention autos and auto ancillaries. But is it, is it the more domestic focus, two-wheeler makers, tractor makers that you like? Or would you stick to your earlier favorites, you know, the global focus auto ancillary companies like Madison, Sumi, etc.? I use a combination of both because, um, you know, domestically we're seeing, you know, very strong demand still. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if we're expecting, you know, the, the global uh, economy to, to start showing, you know, very strong growth and uh, obviously Europe is, is, is starting to pick up in terms of the economy too, then obviously the global players uh, also benefit. So I, I'm, I'm quite happy with yeah, a mixture of, of, of both domestic and, and global focused. Uh, auto and auto parts companies and I think that's where we're going to see I think that's going to be where you see um, you know a lot more kind of uh, price action in the very shorter term. Andrew I just want to go back to that very interesting point you made that if bond yields go to 4% then expect the market to fall by 25% that's an interesting one now what about the 3% level uh, if we do touch 3% on the 10 year then is the market correction already done or do we see a next wave? No, because if bond yields are going to 3%, it's either telling you that growth has accelerated and um, that the Fed will have to be a little bit more aggressive in their interest rate hikes. So, and then that's when you'll start talking about what it could be, um, you know, towards the end of the year. So that, that's the point. So we're all watching bond yields at the moment and, uh, and, and the US dollar uh, to see if that plays out. Um, so my, my, my concern is that, you know, we're, we're getting back to, you know, lower volatility levels uh, and that, you know, if we take our eye off the bond yields and that's, that's where I think the action is going to be and I don't, I, I think that's where you need to focus um, in, in the very short term is where that bond yield is going. Um, but tonight, I, I think, as I said, I don't think the, the new chairman is going to come out and say I'm going to be hugely aggressive otherwise markets will fall straight away. So I think he'll try and soothe our nerves, keep things you know ticking along. Um, but the worry is that if if global growth is a lot quicker, then he's going to the market's going to start saying that he's going to have to price that in very quickly. Okay, the market, by the way, is now slipping, uh, on, especially on the banks. Uh, now the bank Nifty is once again not quite at a low point, but just see the intraday chart of uh, the bank Nifty and also the Nifty. Okay, that's Nifty Bank. Uh, it opened with a slight bit of gap then recovered and is now trying to go back to the low of the day. Nifty is still relatively okay because a couple of other sectors are doing uh, quite okay, like autos, for example. So that way is still okay. Uh, Andrew, you know, for better part of last year, the consensus was that the only risk for this market is global. Uh, this year we have seen with the PNB saga that uh, there can be some domestic risks as well. Uh, is there anything else that could disturb the market this year? There's politics, of course, big state elections. Any other big risks right now? Yeah, I think the elections will keep volatility a little bit higher uh, than, than last year, Anuj. And I think we saw, even with the uh, Gujarat elections, the kind of swing you can have in a day, um, you know, if, if results are not looking so favourable. Um, so I think that will add more volatility. I think what we're looking at in, in the very short term is, is the GST collections and seeing if they're really starting to pick up, because if they're not, then obviously, you know, borrowings are, you know, going to have to go higher, and that will keep bond yields elevated from where we are now. Um, and obviously, the oil price, you know, which we expect to kind of move towards that 70 level again, again, is going to keep put pressure on the on the fiscal deficit. So, I, I, I think, whereas before it was equities only, I think debt as an asset class comes back a little bit for investors as a, as a as, as a way to kind of uh, you know get higher. Of, you know, more safer return, shall we say. So a little bit more volatility in, in, in our markets. I don't think it's going to be a, 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 um, an easy ride this year, and um, particularly in the smaller mid caps. It's going to be a little bit more fraught with danger. Um, so I think you are going to have more volatility. That all said, um, for 18, 19, I'm expecting earnings growth of 15%. That's one five percent um, which is probably the first time we're going to see earnings growth of, of that magnitude for, for many years. And I think the markets can move in line with that. So expect a more choppy year, but uh, still healthy returns for the index after one year. Okay, Andrew, we normally end our conversation with a bit of football, but I guess there's no point talking now because uh, it's just a 
one horse race now over. It's all about finishing second, right? Yeah, no, we'll just have to uh, bank on the Champions League, I think. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew, for your time. As always, that's Andrew Holland uh, uh, from Avengers. By the way, just want to point out that uh, the market is now slipping quite a bit on the Bank Nifty. We're now down about 120 points. And, you know, I just want to point out, uh, while PNB is down about 7%, uh, just take a look at Bank of Baroda's intraday chart. Because, you know, just reading this report uh, on the Hindu, uh, this is, of course, the, the Hindu's report. Uh, which is talking about uh, the the Bank of Baroda's role in uh, the South Africa's Gupta scandal, which of course led to the resignation of South African President uh, uh, Zakab uh, Zuma. This uh, again, you know, I'm saying this is a, a Hindu report, uh, and you know, this is talking about uh, you know that uh, there were a lot of uh, suspicious activity reports which were voided by the Bank of Baroda managers and uh, never reached the South African Financial Intelligence Centre. That's uh, the investigation by the Hindu and uh, OCCRP. And then it talks about 17,000 transactions of the Bank of Baroda South African operations since January 2012, uh, as well as internal communications that showed that the bank continued to allow the Gupta brothers to operate mm -hmm. a web of accounts to create a complex corporate maze, even as the political scandal about their influence on Mr. Zuma was playing out. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, just want to reiterate that uh, this is a, a, a Hindu, Hindu report, report yeah. uh, but, you know, it's talking about... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Bank of Baroda's role in that, and we know that, you know, ba yeah. Bank of Baroda did close the South African branch. So, so you're saying something? No, I just had a question for Anuj, and I, I think Sonia was also making a point. Uh, Anuj, that's the point. Uh, till the time this news flow keeps coming out, I mm. mean, some of the other investigation yeah. fraud in the PSU space, just because it's a huge part of the country's banking system. Mm. Can the market, I go back to that first question, can you, today is also a day when you're coming after yeah. two very, very strong days. So maybe that that's an added caveat. Mm. Can the market continue to re ring fence the PSU? Problem? Yeah, you know, uh, as, as we discussed in the morning and we mm. said that, you know, today there's a good chance that the market perhaps falls from the high point. Mm. And the temptation would be to, you know, blame this fresh, you know, PNB issue or this Bank of Broda issue. Mm. Uh, the market you know could have uh, fallen anyway because you know you're getting into the resistance zone you've had yeah. two days of big gains 10630s 10640 is also your 20 day moving average yeah. and you know normally when you have a big bounce you do see a bit of a resistance at the previous high and that this is where you fell from and obviously there would be trigger perhaps this uh, you know disclosure from pnb is uh, is the trigger perhaps this report on bank of broda is a trigger uh, triggers would happen but uh, you know I don't think this is the reason that the market is falling. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is for, one of the reasons. I think yeah. for PSU banks in particular, not the market, for PSU yeah. banks in particular, there's now a fear psychosis, right? I mean, there's skeletons stumbling out of the closet every day. Yeah. So uh, if there's any minor news, whether it's authentic or not, I mean, there's massive selling in PSUs. You can't rule that out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, talk about the real estate space then because we have lots of big guests joining us now to tell us how the situation is there. Uh, first up, Pirocha Godrej, the executive chairman of Godrej. Godrej Properties joins us from the sidelines of the Kotak Institutional Equities Chasing Growth Conference. Pirocha, hi, good morning. Thank you for being with us on CNBC TV 18. You know, you've recently added a new residential project in Gurgaon. Uh, you've been expanding in NCR Gurgaon uh, for a while now, and this is a market that was really weak, uh, but you've managed to become a market leader. Um, what's the outlook there? Is the worst of the slowdown behind us? The NCR market has been a key part of our company's growth strategy. The, the way we're looking at things is that we really want to focus our business development activities on the top four markets in the country, which are Mumbai, NCR, Bangalore, and Pune. Um, and these, we think, contribute to the vast majority of the value of real estate sold, and therefore it makes more sense for us um, to deploy as much capital as we can in these markets. Within that, I think NCR has been a very uh, uh, has been a market that we've been very happy with the response we've received. We first entered the Gurgaon market in about 2012, and have since grown to become one of the leaders in that market. Over the last couple of years, we've also entered the Noida market, and we had two uh, very successful project launches there in both Greater Noida and Noida. So yes, I think overall the NCR market is something that we've been very happy with. We've just added another new project in Gurgaon. We have quite a full launch calendar slated for NCR over the next 12 months. We're actually in the process of launching a new project in Sona, uh, also in NCR, and that project has fortunately received a very strong response. So I think the NCR market will continue to be one that, that uh, we see a lot of new investment and a lot of new project opportunities in. Okay, Perusha, so uh, maybe some numbers. Obviously, NCR is working really well for you. So the sales pipeline for the remainder of this year and the next? 
So, Anya, you know, we typically, at the end of each financial year, decide on the next year's pipeline and then announce that as part of our Q4 results, which we'll stick to this time. But I think, you know, we're quite positive with the momentum we're seeing both in business development and sales. So that should lead to a pretty healthy pipeline for next year. For this year, for example, in the first three quarters, we've already sold about 4,000 crore worth of real estate. And to put that in context, we sold 2,000 crore in all of the previous financial year. So within the first three quarters, we've already seen 100% growth. We've also seen our business development portfolio additions increase by 100% in terms of the area we've added to our portfolio so far this year. And that usually translates in the following year to robust sales launches, because each of these projects we now are entering we would typically quickly try to complete the design and regulatory approval process and then bring those projects to market. So while I don't have a specific number of launches uh, that I can give you right now, certainly I think uh, the next financial year should be our, our best ever year for, for new launches. Okay, Pirosha, good morning. There's a report by Ambit which suggests that there's been a downtick in prices in Pune, Bangalore and the MMR region while Ahmedabad and Hyderabad have seen a rise and also that unsold inventory levels in Mumbai are high. What's your feedback? I think a couple of points on this. Uh, one, prices have been flattish, I would say, for the most part across the country. In some markets like NCR, as you pointed out, they have actually seen reasonably significant declines. So I'd say on average, many places in NCR are seeing a 20 30% price reduction. In most other markets, you're seeing quite flattish uh, prices. What you're also, however, seeing is a large amount of consolidation happening in the industry. So I think the top 10 or so real estate developers in each of these cities is rapidly gaining market share at the expense of smaller players. So the, if that segment of the industry does have certainly a much better track record on volumes, but does also have a little bit better pricing power. Um, but overall, I think you know the downturn in the sector has continued now for the fourth or fifth year at least. And I think we expect, though, that that, that situation will turn around quite significantly over the next year or two. Because if you look at it now, the economy is doing reasonably well. Real estate affordability is the best it's been in over 15 years, with interest rates having come down, property prices being flat, people's incomes having grown. So our own sense is that you will see prices start picking up over the next year or two. But certainly for the current situation is that you, are, you, you aren't really seeing that in any market yet. Okay. Well, that's good to hear uh, that at least the affordability has improved. So, you know, you're seeing more traction there. There's also a view that the RERA implementation will lead to more land bank opportunities, especially for pan-India players and for players who have a healthy balance sheet like yourself. How has life changed for you after RERA? I think this process of consolidation I mentioned in the industry was already underway much before RERA. But I think it's certainly fair to say that RERA has added a lot of impetus to that, pro that process. Because I think many unorganized developers will struggle to continue in the industry with this kind of a governance framework. So what we're seeing is a greater number of land opportunities, both for outright purchase, but also for the partnership structures that we typically prefer. And I certainly think that that will continue to gather pace over the next few years. Okay, Pirosha, what could be the project additions over the next two or three quarters? You know, in the first three quarters of the financial year, we saw about uh, 20 to 25 million square feet of new project additions, and these are all in the form of various partnership structures. You know, in some ways, that's a little bit misleading because the area is not really as relevant as the value, and I think if we add a project, say, in the heart of Mumbai, that's not worth the same amount as, you know, in, in some of the suburban areas of other cities. So I think area may not be the best metric, but certainly it's one important metric. And I, I, I think, if anything, we should see that pace of additions, which is already very high, gain further pace in the next year because market conditions are pretty much ideal for business development. Our own sales uh, momentum is quite strong. Uh, the number of micro markets in which we don't have projects and would like to add projects remains very large. And most other developers and landowners are feeling uh, a, a bit of difficulty in the current environment. So they are very happy and in, uh, excited about entering into partnerships with us. So I think that combination of factors means that we should hopefully be able to ensure that our business development track record only strengthens from here. Okay, just one final question then before we end the discussion. Uh, you know, the uh, phase three of the trees project uh, wa was delayed for a while. Uh, of course, it's now on track, but when can we expect revenue recognition for this phase? 
There's been no delay there. It's actually, the construction's moving on at a great pace. We actually launched the project only in the first quarter of the current financial year. Um, so we certainly think that that will hit revenue recognition either this quarter or next quarter. And usually, actually, that's a little bit faster than, than usually is the case in the sector. Okay. Well, all the best for the quarters to come. Thanks so much, Pirocha, for speaking with us.